proliferator yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, Alinda Rock, yeah. uh, teach a grouping system. So if they teach a grouping system, that means it comes through uh, great grandmaster Jose Villasen. Now there are a couple of other schools that don't teach the, the grouping system, so they call it the original Saavedra um, Balintarat Saavedra. system. So Saavedra, Lorenzo Saavedra was the instructor for Antion Bacon, but all the Saavedras were killed during World War II, and only <laughs> Antion Bacon was left to right. carry on that, that style, which he called <clears throat> Balintarat. Wow. So that's why a lot of people don't, don't there's not a lot of Balintarat schools, right. it's because I think we came later on in the game and um, thank okay. God for Bobby Tobata creating yeah, a system yeah. and then He's just He's the biggest teaching. one that you ever hear about. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby Tobata, yeah. whenever you hear yeah. a reference yeah. to Bobby Tobata, his yeah. name and comes yeah. up. Yeah. And he's a, he's a character. When you oh, watch yeah. him, oh, yeah. he's just a lot of fun to watch. He's a great yeah. great speaker, great yeah, teacher. He's, he's just got this character. big he's, personality. Yeah, and you look at me, I'm always like, oh, this guy's cool. And he's, <laughs> and he's, and he's, <laughs> he's, he just sit there and he's like, whoa. Yeah. You know? Even your eyes lit up yeah, when you're talking yeah. about him. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I know Bobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. We'd love to meet him. Hey, Bobby, come, on, come to the show. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to get him out on the, east, on the West Coast, but he, yeah. he hardly comes out here. Especially with COVID, you know, I don't think he's out here. Yeah. You know, it's funny because we've had to go and travel just to go see um, Auntie Denise. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we, we all flew out to uh, Vegas oh, really? to, to do that interview. You could yeah. drive there, you know, you could drive there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but I, I work for United. <laughs> So, so he gets vouchers. We get, we get no, like, I had a road on myself. <laughs> oh, really? I had a road yeah. on myself. Yeah, the flight was, the flight was good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, nobody was on the plane, you know. No, nope. we're like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. And the people that were all had masks and coverings. Well, everything was good. But, but yeah, I love to go to the Philippines. I love to go explore my culture. That's awesome. You know, so I go. I don't hang out with relatives and go to the Great Mall of Asia. <laughs> you know, I do things like, you know, swimming with the whale sharks right. or oh, climbing okay. the rice terraces. You or, swam with whale sharks? Yeah. Yes. And in 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 cool um, that? Um, God, what island is that? That wasn't Palawan, was it? No, it's not Palawan. It was um, Don Sol. Don Sol. Don Sol. Don Sol. Don um, I, I love to scuba dive, so uh -huh. I dive, I hike, you know. So I, I, I do things kind of off the beaten path, but, but the other great. thing I do is I, I want to go you meet. sound American, <laughs> right? Well, you know, American tourists will do what you're saying. No, you know, no, <laughs> the, the European tourists will do this. Uh, yeah, not right. The, not the Americans. Matter of fact, when I'm out at some of these places, I see a lot of um, European backpackers, okay. but I see very few Americans, let alone mm -hmm. Phil Ams. <laughs> yeah, you won't you know, see the, the Phil Ams, like went, you said, to the mall. The Phil Ams, you know where they want to go? Baraka. It's, yeah, uh, Baraka. They want to go, to, or they want to go to stay at some yeah. um, time timeshare. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I we did Baraka, like and local. you're right. It, it's so dirty now. From what they've it cleaned used. it up oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I want to. Every few years, I want to experience the culture. Yeah, yeah. I want to meet the real people. You know, and so I. I don't want to go to tourist spot. Exactly. Okay. I want to meet the real people. I want to see things. Well, I'm gonna, next time you go, sharks. let me know. We'll, we'll yeah. go with you because it's not like you're having a lot more fun than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, 2022. Uh, 2022. Uh, another uh, uh, camp in March. Oh, really? Ooh. Oh, that might be fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll all get. Um, Should I bring a mouth guard? Well, okay, I don't tattoos. know. Oh wait. Oh, okay. now um, you brought up tattoos. You're yes. in trouble. You're in trouble because <laughs> I, 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 I've seen your tattoos. I think at one point I saw you, you were in your uh, traditional garb, so, you know, completely exposed. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> that one. Yeah. I didn't approach you because you were, you know, almost naked. Um, but now I'm, I'm kind of... look but not touch. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I just kind of keep my distance. Um, but now I really want to know, well, what's, what's the history behind the tattoos? Because there's uh -huh. a lot to be said about traditional tribal tattoos. There's, yeah. there's a story told. Exactly, exactly. How does that work? No, we're not going to have him take a shirt off. No, we're okay. not. It's too cold. My nipples. <laughs> <laughs> it was summer. I had no problem. We'll get pictures later on. Yeah. And then we'll post yeah. them. We'll yeah. send us pictures. Yeah. yeah. Send him it's pictures. kind of cold. I, my nipples. Are, I, I don't, it might turn you on. I don't know. Anyways. No, when I was in grad school, um, in, in one of my classes, they asked us to do a paper on our mytho-epistemological foundations. Holy what the crap. hell is that? What is yeah, grad meaning... School, right? <laughs> Basically, what, what it breaks down to is, what is your authentic culture? Okay. Okay. And you ask the Filipino, what's your authentic culture? We'll start with Spain. No. Our authentic culture starts with our indigenous peoples. Right. And so, from there, People where, where do you start with that? And I was told to start with your mythology. What is their, their creation myth? Right? What are the myths around the seasons, around the animals, around the plants? Well, you're and going really far back. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, but that is our authentic, our authentic culture. Right. And it forced me to do a lot of research to, to 
try to determine what was my original culture. Right. I'm Filipino, but no, I'm Ilocano. But no, I'm something else deeper than that. That and came that's, before, yeah. That's what led me to my um, finding my Ifugao roots. Right. So in the Cordillera mountain range in the northern part of the Philippines, there are dozens of different tribes. That are still okay. there. Still, that's still there, yeah. still intact. Mm-hmm. Because the Spaniards, the Japanese, the Americans, they couldn't get up there because it, so, it was so rugged mm-hmm. to right. get up there. So these people, their culture stayed pretty much intact. Yeah, I've, I've and, noticed that the Philippines now um, will bring some of those people down from the mountains and kind of show them off. This way. Yeah. And I hate that because it's like, dude, what are you guys doing, you know? Yeah. You're, 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 you're taking these people you're from there. Them. Yeah, and yeah. it's like... But it's not really. Export. See, these people, our people had always come down from the mountains to trade. Right. So there's been commerce all the time. But what I found out through one of my research um, through a man named uh, <coughs> William Henry Scott is that uh, my father's hometown is Bawang La Union. Right. Okay, um, the the Ifugaos are in the Cordillera, you know, past Baguio, up there in the mountains. But there was an old they called the Iguro Trail right. from Baguio. I've heard of that to the to the ocean. Yeah, so and you know the trailhead was huh. Bawang La Union. <laughs> and so right during the, we... where my father's yeah. from. Huh. So during the Spanish <laughs> Spanish era, what was happening is the Spaniards found out that there was gold and silver up there. <laughs> and you know what the Spaniards do? They yeah. want to exploit it. Right, so yeah, they, they tried, stuff, So right? they found out where the trail was and started trying to go up there. So the Ifugaos sent their best warriors down the mountain to guard that trailhead, Bawang La Union, and that's where I trace my my warrior heritage. Ifugao heritage from. Wow, it's those original um, Ifugao warriors who were sent there to protect that that trailhead from the Spanish going up that there. That sounds and a lot today, like guerrilla warfare. And today, <laughs> that that road is the Nagillion Highway. So if you've ever been to, if you've been ever been to um, La Union and go up to Baguio, it's only like forty five minutes by I'm bus. Have to go but that somewhere. highway is the Nagillion Highway. Wow. So they turned that original trail into That's a, a road because it's been there. used so much. So is, is, is the, are the people up on the top there still the tribe or? Yeah, they're still, to, they're still they're still up there. They're still. That's the, crazy. Not just a evil guy. And, and the, the now, what part of the Philippines is that? The north. The north. The north side. Yeah. Because I. You know, anytime I go, I'm usually in Manila, you know, in that wow. area. Well, your family um, is. Yeah, my cousins are. And then um, I've never gone that far, like uh-huh. to the north. Or My wife is from uh, the Cyan Islands of Bohol. Uh-huh. So I, I visited that, and that was crazy. I love Bohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was a beautiful place, but it's still crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, no, it, it, you can only get anywhere. There's a, either you're going to go by bus, which we did, uh-huh. or by some guy on a motorcycle. Yeah, you know, and that was the only way. Or private, really private car, or private van. Yeah. yeah, that. But you know, yeah. my wife comes from a very poor part of town. Uh, you know, and we we try to stay with tradition. You know, I mean, we rented a guy. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. drive us around. But other than that, you either get on a motorcycle, and you mm-hmm. cruise the city that way, or you get on the bus without aircon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's but those are the smoking. best way to travel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you see the again, you see the real people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talk about American. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the first time I went to the Philippines was in 1968. Wow. wow. 1968. I was, just, I was seven years old. Seven. Um, it was the first time my, my mother had gone back since she came to America in 1960. As a war bride? Yeah. No, she, no, she came in 59. 58. It was the first time she went back in 1967. So I was seven. My sister was eight. And I had a two-year-old brother who went. And the whole family went. Wow. Um, and that was the first time. But, but that's, that trip just made a huge impact on me. And well, I can imagine. I have gone back every year, or every five years, since about 1986. Wow. So I was there, if anything, I was there during the first people power. Right. Right, well, and I was, I was actually a yeah. journalist. So I was sent there by a magazine. You were a journalist? Me. Yeah. So the magazine okay. I, I worked we're talk for about that. <laughs> was um, <laughs> called the Running Scene Magazine. Right. It was based out of Sacramento. And I was, uh, right. I was a writer, photographer. And so they sent me there to cover the Manila International Marathon. Right. It was in the height of people power. All those protests people were going power on. People power was uh, uh, back then. Ferdinand Marcos, who was a really bad dictator, dictator, yeah. dictator um, was. He had declared martial law. Yeah, declared martial law on the, on the entire state, right? Yeah. But then there was a gentleman by the name of Aquino, uh, Benigno Aquino. Benigno Aquino, who was assassinated because I don't want to. As he was coming off the an plane airplane. Yeah. from America. Yeah. By the military, it's fully the military. Yeah. Anyway, we're supposed to not talk about politics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but that's, 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 that's like the, the Filipino well, Martin Luther King, pretty much. 
in kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Political. And yeah. then his, his wife ran for president uh, against and, Marcos. And she won. Yeah, and yeah. that was the people vote. But, but uh, they had... So but, I wanted to make sure people but, knew what people yeah. vote was. So well, people yeah, power no, forced, forced Marcos out of the Philippines. Yes. Nice. Forced. And so you had all these, you know, thousands, thousands of people protesting on Edsa, which is this main road yeah, Ed says through, that, yeah. through, through the Manila, only, the only through the suburbs. Anywhere. During the marathon, so my, which my is mom was so worried about me going to the Philippines. So all you, all we saw on US TV was all these protests yeah. in, in the military. In the yellow shirts. <laughs> but I was, I was there at the Manila Hotel, the finest yeah. hotel in, in probably all of Asia with all the world <laughs> press. And, and I did not see any of that stuff. Right. I mean, basically, I was there to do my assignment, get wow. drunk. Smoke some, <laughs> smoke some Philippine weed and see a little bit, and that was it. Right. Yeah. But um, but from that time on until today, I've been going pretty much every five, two, five years. Wow. When I uh, when I first started with working with United Airlines, I was able to go. Oh yeah. And we would go like when they used to fly there. there. Yeah. When they used to, but they you can still get there now. You go through Hawaii, Guam, then Manila. Oh no kidding. Yeah. So we do that a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll bring my sisters to get discounts and like, yes. yeah, we're going. Buddy fairs. Yeah, oh yeah. So we're all going. Standby. Yeah. But I remember the first time I went there, I was just really, one, I was saddened by what I saw. Uh-huh. And then you realize, no, this is the way they live and they're all okay with their content. Nobody's, you know, because mm-hmm. I, like I said, I come from a poor part of town over there at the gig result. Uh-huh. And it, back then it was uh, probably 89 or so around there. It was still dirt roads. Yeah. So you get on the jitney. By the end of the day, you're blowing snot. Yeah. It's yeah. all black and just soot and everything. Yeah. Um, so I was just, you know, I, I see kids running around in their underwear. Yeah. If that, you know, yeah, they have yeah, like a yeah. just a t-shirt on maybe. Yeah. But they're playing with rocks and having a good old time. Yeah. But made me cry. I was like, oh, yeah. that was the first time I was like, whoa! Yeah. I really took my life Poverty, for granted. Yeah. yeah. But they were content. They were yeah. they were all good with it. And I was like. This is not right, you know, and, and I was just like, dude, not all this rich stuff, like, man, let me give these kids whatever I got. And I'm just But it puts things up. in perspective. Yeah, it really did. You know, uh, I'm a runner, so one time I was in Don Sol where the, where the whale sharks were, and Ooh. that morning I was running through the village and through the town, and I saw this little kid, you know, I don't think he was wearing any pants, but he right, had a shirt, just a shirt on, on. <laughs> and he had this um, old bicycle rim they probably yeah. found in the garbage, no spokes, just a rim, yeah. and he had a stick, and, did, and he's yeah. running down yeah. the road, <laughs> pushing it with the yeah. stick. But the look on his face. So yeah. yeah. The look on his face. And then kids here in America, what do they want for Christmas? These three hundred dollar, five hundred dollar uh, video games. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. It just puts things in perspective. I feel bad now because I just bought my daughter a hoverboard that she wanted. <laughs> no. But you know, it, it it just puts things in perspective. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, um, when we were kids in the Philippines, we would have fun playing with the yo-yos. Right. Wooden yo-yos or those tops. Remember? Right. All hand carved. Oh yeah, I, I came to this country still they playing put the with those. Little caps on the bottom. You just yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you, or you make things out of bamboo, you know. Um, but it just puts things in perspective. Yeah. But no, and, and that's why I said it, it made me cry to see yeah. that. But then I thought about it, and, and the people that were there that I was saying, because I used to work also at a hotel, uh-huh. the Intercontinental. Mm-hmm. So I had free. I could have gone to the Intercontinental Hotel there mm-hmm. for free, and I said. They say, oh, you're going to go to He goes, no, I'd rather stay with you guys. He said, yeah. if you guys can live this way, yeah. who the hell am I? Just because I'm an yeah. American, going to stay at the hotel, even if it's free, I would like to just stay with yeah. you guys. And they were really like, okay, okay. you're an idiot, but okay. <laughs> you know, because... I agree. You know, so my first night, I'm laying there, and it's dark because brownouts were still the thing. And I feel this, right? And I happen to look, and I see just the tail end of a rat, like... Okay, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the Philippines. I'm like, holy crap. You know, but again, that my family was living there, me and my cousins, and there that was the way of life. So I said, okay, let me just shut up and let me just, when in Rome, do what yeah. the Romans do. And then in the morning when I take that shower or that bath, <laughs> with the table. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it woke my eyes up to a lot of things, and, and, I, and I felt really bad when I was leaving. I said, wow, I'm going back to a... a a rich, better life, and I'm leaving these people back here. I'm like, wow, that you know. Well, that's why my father and his generation, even now, what the Filipinos do, they send money back. Yeah. yeah. So oh, because I, yeah. because my father and his brothers sent money back to there were there were seven of them. Uh, four of them came here. The four single ones came to America in the twenties, and the three the married ones had to stay. stayed in the yeah. Philippines. So the four brothers here sent money back. So that his the brothers there can send their children to good schools, yeah, yeah. and now three four generations later, I see my those children the children of those children 
most of them are on the East Coast, they tell me, you know, if it wasn't for your father and your uncles, yeah. we wouldn't be here today. Oh, wow. So to know how how one generation can affect the other yeah. future generations, right. it's powerful too. Yeah. So you, you don't think about that at the time. And these men weren't rich. No, no. They were they were I mean, they were they were scraping along. I mean, they weren't dirt poor, but they would send every little bit, extra bit, back to the Philippines. Because you know that one dollar you send over there gets multiplied to 50, however many pesos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Today is like 50 pesos. Yeah. But I don't know what it was back then. <clears throat> but, um, you know, Filipinos still do that today. Yeah. I, I think you just said something that, that really resonated with me and I think speaks volumes on your character and why you do what you do how the past generations affect the future generations. Yeah. And you're here, you're being affected by all these generations before you, your history, mm-hmm. your tattoos or yeah. representation of it, the, the art that you practice, carving these mm-hmm. sticks by hand. What are you leaving behind for the next generation? Everything, everything you said. Uh, I've been doing this <laughs> lecture for the last 20 something years called No History, No Self. No History, No Self. So the first no history spelled N O, second no history spelled K N O W. So it's a it's a visual history of the experiences of Filipinos in America. Yeah. And, and where do you go to do that? Do you... I do this at universities, at colleges, <coughs> at um, conferences, um, for corporate trainings. Um, I like I said, I've been doing this for twenty. When I first started doing it, it was on slides. Now of course I do it on, <laughs> on a PowerPoint, PowerPoint that I can carry on my iPhone. Yeah. But you know. But it, it, for, for most people, it was the first time that they had seen Filipino history put into context. Well, yeah, you know, and, I remember um, when I was it, first it, looking up at the Filipino culture, because I, I did a thing, uh, we were trying to raise money because of uh, Hurricane Yolanda. Yes. Yeah. And I had to know the history, because when we did this fundraiser, I need to talk about it, yeah. but I needed to know. And I'm hearing <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of stuff that you have to understand about the Philippine culture. Yeah. All the different people that attacked and took over yeah. and, and, you know, became, you know, we had to become all kinds of different things to all mm-hmm. kinds of different people and to see why there's so much, um, I mean, our gene pool is crazy. Yeah. Mexicans, Chinese, Japanese, I mean, you name it, everybody Indonesian. was there. And don't yeah. forget African, the first people in the Philippines were the Negritos who came mm-hmm. yeah. across the land bridges and in, in, into the Philippines. Wow. I mean, it's really rich. I mean, we always tell people when you're going to learn Fil- FMA, you yeah. can learn Filipino culture. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and you said something important. When I teach Balintawak, I teach it in the context of Filipino culture and history. If we don't do that as Filipino martial arts instructors, yeah. we're just teaching stick fighting. Right. Yeah. We're just teaching Definitely. stick fighting. So it's important for my students to understand where this art comes from. Matter of fact, when they go up for promotions, after all the physical tests, oh. they have to they have to answer some certain questions. Pop right? quiz. <laughs> they right. have to answer. No, I like that. I like you know, that. That's um, so cool. Good. Why was what? Why was Filipino martial arts created in the Philippines? What was it used for? Mm-hmm. You know, they have to name their lineage. They, I mean, they have to do wow. intellectually. They have to know this this art, not just. I'm never going to pass this class. <laughs> but, well, you're not a scholar. But you learn yeah, it, yeah. No, and, and everything yeah. is there. Everything right. is there is on there the for internet. You to learn. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. there in books. It's there on the yeah, internet. Yeah, when, when I when I did research, I had to get on the internet, and you know, all the way from the Majapahit War, coming mm-hmm. down from and how they ended up in the Visayan Islands. Yeah, so it, it explains why we have all these different influences in our right. art. Right. I mean. Everyone says that the Filipino martial arts are the original mixed martial arts, and it's true. It's because of all these different influences. Yeah. But you know, I, I just I do believe that if we don't teach our history and culture within that context, not just our history and culture in the Philippines, but also our history and culture here in the United States, oh, it goes because, hand in hand. Kinda, kinda, because those monongs who came here in the twenties and thirties, like Leo Jerome, like my father, these guys came here with some with some knowledge, with some skills, right. but they just had to hide it. Right. They just had to hide it. Right. Right? That's why and we use sticks instead of machetes for training. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, that, that brings to mind the, uh, the Presses Brothers mm-hmm. and how they changed, you know, FMA to modern FMA oh. and, and how they decided, oh, let's not look so barbaric. Let's, let's, <laughs> you know, let's put this into the school curriculum. Let's, yeah. let's change it up and make it look, you know, presentable, I guess. Uh, decent. And what are your thoughts on that? Because, I, you know, I hear... I mean, I understood that story, mm-hmm. and I thought that was really cool that these guys wanted to bring it out of the... It's part of the adaptive mm-hmm. nature of yeah, the Filipino yeah. martial arts and yeah. the Filipino people. Yeah, because I, I've always found that to be interesting. Like, these two guys just said, okay, 
you know, the barbarism of what it used to be because, you know, the old death duels, bring yeah. a lawyer so you yeah. can sign off and say, the, if you died, it was okay. The yeah. wiggle total. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but to, to see that these two guys came up and said, hey, we need to change this so people don't think we're just barbarians. So. Yeah, I, I, think it, I think it's a good thing. Oh, I no, think, it's great, yeah. I think you, you bring, again, you're bringing it to the masses. Mm -hmm. But you know, you've trained people, probably hundreds if not thousands of people, you know, Many are called, but few are chosen. Right. So those who, who are introduced to it, who are, whose seed is planted by those classes, they will either take that, that, those lessons and that knowledge and want to continue with it, and, or they will just be done with it at the end of the semester. Right. And, but it starts somewhere. Yeah. And it that kid is our product of that. Yeah. He started with us almost, almost seven almost years ago. Almost seven years ago. And has, doesn't want to leave, so we can't push him out. He's coming back. So you made him your partner for the yeah. Videos. So we made yeah. So now I'm stuck with him. I might as well. I might as well get some good use. There you go. And that's and, why I carry the bags. Yeah, he carries the bags. <laughs> but later on yeah. at five o'clock, I got to bring him back to Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it, it has to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it has to yeah, start yeah, somewhere. yeah. And and we need and I think for too long Filipino martial arts has been hidden. It's been done in you know in it, garages. It's funny that you and, say that though, because in the last. Ten years, it has started to come out. It and has. Who's foreigners? practicing it though? Yeah, but most not foreigners, Filipinos. not Filipinos, yeah, are practicing foreigners it. are yeah. practicing it. Yeah, a lot of foreigners. But there are very. You can't open up. Well, when we say phone books, you can't open yeah. up the yellow page and say look for Filipino martial right. arts. Right. No, <laughs> they were done yeah. in, in garages or basements yeah. like right. Grandmaster Robert Castro yeah. or, or Lito Concepcion in his garage here in Vallejo. You know, they were done in in, in backyards and right. garages. Right. But you know, now it is. We're coming out into the limelight. Yeah. Even you know? we started in the backyard. Yeah. You know, when we did ours. We, we, we got lucky with this, uh, a gym who took us in and said, yeah, come train out this here. This is your so, home now, yeah. yeah. But I think Filipinos need to do better at marketing themselves. Yeah, um, that's why we're doing the show. <laughs> exactly. But, and, and well, because we, if you've ever watched our show, and even like at least three episodes... You'll notice that we talk to a lot of Filipino martial arts people, mm -hmm. but we're also talking to like Kaiju Kempo because there are a lot of Filipinos in that, oh, yeah. you know. And we're, so you have boxers, you know, we have Mickey, the coach, mm -hmm. who talks about the boxing. So we're trying to get all these different things in there, but there's also, we kind of stay true to the Filipino yeah. group, you yeah. know. I mean, and that's one of the things that I, I get a kick out of, but we're, we're, we're also adding in different cultures as well. We have, a, we have this one Chinese lady who is... Um, She's a dialogue coach for Jackie Chan. Yeah, oh, wow. but she yeah, does. She worked with her. a lot of yeah. the stunt people uh -huh. that were on the shows, and her stories are are, are some really fun stuff. Yeah. So wait for that. That's coming out uh, in December. Yeah, you know, so that's a fun that's story. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you're right, and I think um, when Filipinos start putting their banners and stuff out in other dojos and yeah. and going out doing the tournaments and seminars and and you're right in in europe we're a big deal in, in europe oh europe yeah, yeah, love, yeah yeah they love to yeah. go to the philippines and train with the grand masters yeah. and then come mm -hmm. back because they, yeah, they take it so much more serious than yeah. actual filipinos yeah. well, <laughs> well you know because filipinos especially here in america we, we still have those vestiges of colonial mentality yeah. where we believe that anything that's filipino is not as good as something else right and um, but it takes people like us who are, are really committed and passionate about our arts and, and sharing it and explaining why why we do it you know do you find it that it's a little difficult for you to get your message across to other Filipinos because you were essentially American born or you're an American they're not my if if they don't want to listen to me they're not my target audience oh okay. right now yeah. really um, because you, you want to pass it on to the Filipino you want yeah. the Filipino people to learn about their own history yeah but when that message doesn't get across, and then it comes across to say a Mexican, because <laughs> I've I've been learning a lot about the Filipino culture well, and how it ties into my culture. We we we're we're connected. Yes. I don't know how, if you know how we're connected. Yeah. But our, our you know we're, we're just the Pacific Latinos. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we are. But we're connected to the to the Mexican culture mm -hmm. through the galleon trade. Yeah. Right. From. Um, from. Eight, eighty eighty percent of the. Fifteen sixty five to eighteen fifteen. Right. We yeah. we cross that Pacific Ocean to. Yeah. Uh, Cape Mendocino, California, follow right. that coast down to Mexico, uh, to Acapulco. Yeah, I ran and, my people from there. We're taking to yes. the Philippines too. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and it, go, it went Back both ways. Yeah. But the yeah. mangoes, the, the manila mangoes yeah. from Mexico, they, those came from um, the <laughs> Philippines. All the coconut trees along the, the Pacific <clears throat> coast, those came from the galleons because they used the coconut as ballast and as drink right. along that long journey. And then when they got to the coast, 
of Mexico, they just dumped them dumped out. Dumped everything out. And yeah. you're like, oh, hey, yeah. something's growing. <laughs> but you got, I mean, they stole adobo from us. And hey! <laughs> <laughs> to, buy, to buy the coconut wine that yeah. came from the Philippines. So, wow. no, we've had this interchange, you yeah. know, not only through the galleon trade, but Dude, because you know of what? the Catholic you, you, religion. You know what I'm coming to find out, Neil? Yeah. I'm coming to find out we're going to need to talk to you for like another hour or so because yeah. there's you a lot have to be learned. So I mean, you're so your knowledgeable. Head. I do. Yeah. Mm. Um, what, what a great find it is today. Because, yeah. again, we never expected this much coming from you. No. And, and usually... usually <laughs> we have no expectations. So, so here, here, here's the funny... Here's, we don't. Here's, here's the funny thing, right? We, we were trying to stay under an hour or right. an hour. Yeah. yeah. So that after that we would do some physical, physical stuff. stuff yeah. But I'm actually more intrigued by, by, we're talking by about. the yeah. stuff that we're talking about. And the history, because this is also fascinating. I mean, we'll get to the physicals part, but... You know, because he just flashed his, his timer at me like, no, wait, we're going to stay here for a little bit longer because it's so cool to hear this. Because in a lot of the history books that I've read or mm -hmm. things on the Internet, I'm not hearing this stuff. No. Yeah. Which is weird. Why? Because who writes the history books? The white the, people. The, the yes. history, right. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, Filipinos, again, need to start marketing themselves, which means writing their own books, writing their own history. Right. So I belong to a, a, a group called the Filipino American National Historical Society. So we have 36 chapters from coast to coast. Wow. And um, by different cities and, and areas. So I'm, I created the Valencia.